Hey Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. I'm out crab staring at the Westport Fishing Boardwalk. Already got two in the bucket. You've seen me crab snare before though, so I didn't really plan to make a video. And it occurred to me, I said I was going to do a retrospective in 2022, which uh, there's not really any 2022 left, so being a man of my word, here's that retrospective. 10 year retrospective is what it is. Although I'm closer to 11 now as a YouTuber. I guess I did take a little footage earlier. Uh, check this tragedy out. These are the remains of the Harbor Resort, pictured here during better times. A lot of people use the store on the first floor there. I have some good memories staying there. I remember one trip in particular. I think I was in, maybe I was like a sophomore in high school. My mom took me there for the weekend, and I remember us fishing off the back and having a blast. Uh, yeah, it stood there since 1962. Kind of ironically, it looks like about the only thing that survived was the fake logs in this fireplace. November 4th, November 4th, 2002. Uh, I guess it just caught fire during the middle of the night. So major bummer, another Westport landmark gone. All right, so this retrospective will consist of a couple things. One will be a little story about the channel, just how it started, and then two, what it was like being a YouTuber over 10 years ago. So I went to uh, grad school and I graduated and I was working full time. And even if you're a young person, that's a real grind doing 40 hours a week than doing night school, you know? And so I was feeling just mentally burnt out uh, creatively drained and that used to be a part of myself that I really liked was being kind of somewhat creative I'm not saying that I be any more creative than anybody else but just an aspect of my character I enjoyed you know cracking jokes and all that good stuff and I remember at the end of grad school just thinking hey I used to be creative and I, oh, I think I'm gonna bite well, let's see I don't think it's anything oh that's something never mind that's something Say it's been good. I already got two in the bucket. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's barely holding on. I can already tell. I'm only going to measure an armament on it, but I'm sure this one's a little small. I can tell it's kind of like that. That'd be six inches out here on the coast. I can tell this is kind of that. 5 and 15 16th range you know <laughs> all right I was I was right on with that one just a you put a piece of paper between it and the six inch minimum shoot it's gotten super windy out I may have to continue this uh, retrospective at a different location. Well, all right, here's the other place. I'm out with my buddy Hugh. It's the last day of winter crabbing season. I know I'll probably post this in the first or second day of January, but this is where we'll finish up the retrospective. Before I get to that though, check it out. We got a leak in the boat. Not too worried about it. I do have a bilge, you know, uh, and there's been, this boat's been leaking quite a bit recently. Yeah, so I don't even know what punch through it. I've been thinking of doing videos about the line. I was gonna put a false floor in it this winter, but I think it's, I think I just need to move on, honestly. These, these lines are good boats for a while. I think this is its 10th year. Puget Sound beats them up <laughs> between the conditions and the salt, that's for sure. Rest in peace, Luki. Yeah. Hugh and I are dropping crab pots here. Got the four pots between us. Last day of the year we can do it, just trying to clean out the freezers here. We don't really expect to get much. We're in the very southern part of Area 9. Great day on the water, calm day. Tomorrow's gonna be a bluebird day, but that's the day it closes, so what you gonna do? Hugh just discovered another leak, holy smokes. By the way, Hugh also pulled that piece of styrofoam out. We're what you call eco-heroes. At any rate though, look at that leak. I don't know what it is with the one today. It's just, uh, I guess the aluminum just decided to go bad. <laughs> wow. When I first pull, kind of moving this one because it was a little short when I dropped it, you know, on the length of the line. Oh, those are actually some specific graceful crabs that look just like that. Great, well we'll be moving this pot. So at any rate, uh, all those graceful crabs have been gracefully put back. I wasn't feeling too graceful though after grad school, so that's when I started Washington Fish Quest. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. I actually, I it was out, you know, I was, I was out, I was tired, but I was still feeling like I wanted to contribute to the community. 
So I actually joined a board, a uh, board of a nonprofit called the Olympia Film Society. And they oversee the Grand Old Capitol Theater in downtown Olympia and show lots of, lots of great movies and live events and that sort of thing. Uh, I thought that'd be a way for me to reconnect with my artistic side. However, it turns out being on the board of an arts nonprofit is the same as being on any board in the world where it's more about staffing and staying in the black and facilities maintenance. Now, I'm really proud of some of the stuff we did on the board. So up until then, we just rented the Capitol Theater. While I was on the board, I didn't lead this, but I did get a vote for it. We voted to purchase the Capitol Theater, so the Olympia Film Society actually owns it. And again, it's a grand old building. It's got uh, great uh, deco and uh, gothic, a little bit of gothic elements in it. Uh, art deco, I mean, designed to it. Wonderful, wonderful building. Uh, but at any rate, so check it out if you're ever in downtown Olympia. But, uh, you know, I, I left feeling even more drained than that, uh, you know, when I was done with my time on the board there. So I thought to myself, what's the one thing, Blake, that you really enjoy doing and you'd like to share with the world? It was fishing. Yeah, so, you know, I thought, uh, I like video production, I like fishing. It wasn't always a foregone conclusion, though, that Washington Fish Quest was going to be on YouTube. You know, it was, uh, YouTube been around then for a while, don't get me wrong, in, by, in 2012. However, I have a, I do have experience with local community television. I worked, I worked, I don't know if four is quite the right term, but with City of Centralia for three years, producing city council meetings, music in the parks. I, when I was in uh, community college, Centralia Community College, go Blazers. I announced the basketball games, so I would have been probably just as happy doing that, honestly, as long as I was creating content. Uh, however, the YouTube did, was around, and there were some channels I watched. There was, I think, maybe about five or six uh, Washington fishing channels before me, and three of them are still around. I'm the only one with a nonprofit motive, so I, I'd say that's kind of my niche, perhaps. But, and I'm not saying that, you know, if you have commercials that you're like a for profit machine or anything, but I'm just saying I don't. Uh, get any anything out of this monetarily but at any rate uh, F24 was the channel that I think I'm the closest to now so if I have a predecessor I'd say it, it was them uh, that's uh, Cammy and Glenn and Tony sometimes and Tony still comments on my a lot of my videos so thank you Tony for that but yeah and uh, you know I think about that channel I really liked and really Washington Fish Quest there's like two two things really the main thing is just look at the look at the fun that guy's having. I should get out and go fishing. You know, that's that was the number one thing. It was just just to, for a spark for people to think, oh, geez, I really need to get out and go fishing. You know, uh, what a fun time. I just wanted to be like pure positivity, and I feel like I've accomplished that. I've had a lot of people send me really nice notes uh, saying that they either started fishing because of me or got back into it or that sort of thing, especially way back then. You know, I posted on my stories, one of the highlights, probably the highlight of my channel was a group of uh, second graders, Mrs. Alvarado's second grade class wrote me, they, you know, she, she'd use my videos as geography lessons because going all over the state, you know, so that was really cool. And so they, they sent me like handwritten letters. So that was really neat. Uh, then the second thing in Washington Fish Quest is just showcasing the diversity of fisheries because a lot of the channels before me were really salmonid focused, which, which I don't be wrong, I do my fair share of salmon videos now, but at the time, there wasn't there was a lot of species that hadn't been covered which brings me to what it was like being a youtuber in 2012 versus today so yeah since there wasn't many channels yet for instance my first video was black rockfish off the westport west haven state park jetty it was the only game in town that was the only video of its kind like that now there's probably 30 videos fishing off the westport jetty there for black rockfish uh, so if you wanted to watch Black Rockfish action off the Westport Jetty, you had to come to old Washington Fish Quest. <laughs> so I had, you know, I had kind of a little monopoly going there, and uh, it was great. <laughs> and I, I wish that YouTubers had started a channel after, let's say, maybe about 2016 or so, when things really started blowing up as far as the number of channels. I wish you could experience that because it was really cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm not too driven by numbers. Well, with my channels, you know, like views, views and stuff like that. I mean, they feel good and all that, but really, I'm just like I say, it's if I feel like it's a quality product, I'm happy. And if my if my kind of hardcore, as I call them, consider it a quality product, I'm happy. But I was looking back, so my first five years with the channel, which I did much fewer videos than the last five. Look at this chart here. This is how many videos I've done in the last two years versus the first eight. So as you can see, in the last two years, I've done more than the the first eight. And there's also add on that like 40 shorts, which is worth maybe another half a video. <laughs> so at any rate, in the first five years, looking back at my videos, I had 25 that got over 10,000 views, you know. 
And you might think that's because they're older, but that's really not so much the case. It was more just like, again, if you wanted to watch something on a specific subject, black rockfish, red tail surf perch, even channel catfish in Washington, I was it. You know, like I, you pretty much had to come to my channel. Uh, so that was more why those videos had got so many views. And then in the last five years, I believe it's I had seven that were over 10,000. So in the first five, I had 25. In the last five, I've had seven. And keep in mind, like I just said, I've been way more productive, especially the last couple of years. So that's a big way it's changed being a YouTuber. And that's something modern day YouTubers don't get to experience. You either got to be real good or real lucky, one or the other, I think. But all of the times real good don't matter on YouTube with the algorithm, in my opinion. Because, I mean, there's a lot of channels that I think just do great work that... that uh, for whatever reason just don't hit with uh, subs and views and all that's that happy horse rut yeah so I had quite a different experience I'd say than any modern youtuber and the fact that like I had a great first three years and then you know my son was born so I did back off I, I still did videos every year I mean I, I you know it might have been like one or four or six but you know maybe not that many some people think I completely went away I didn't but you know then I came back really strong these last two years and I'll talk about that in my next video, about what I'm going to do looking ahead here, because that has been a crazy pace for someone with a 40 an hour a week kind of standard job, you know, and a family life and all that good stuff. But yeah, really different experience, I think, than, than most, most modern YouTubers. And uh, some new folks ask me, some new YouTubers ask me, like, how to get views and that sort of thing. Hey, I'm not the guy to ask. I've been doing this for 10 years and I got like, I think, 7,000 subs or something like that. That's uh, somewhere in the 70s. I mean, but and i'm grateful for every one of them but for doing it for 10 years <laughs> you'd think you'd have more than that i digress though but uh i would say you know the goal should just be make a product you're happy with like it should be your own artistic expression that you enjoy so if you're happy with it that's kind of it because you you lose control after that point you know you don't know if your thing is going to get up of you or a million views so and in my opinion as long as one person's watching it's worth it you know if one person finds inspiration from your work then that's that's all that matters. But if you want a less uh, pie in the sky answer, shorts are like lottery tickets. The YouTube shorts these days <laughs> seems completely random to me. So that's the actual answer if you're a new new YouTuber and you want views. They're probably going to be a bunch of bots and people that don't actually care about what you're doing, unfortunately. But and that's why I've never asked for a sub, or I've never asked for a sub or uh, a like or anything like that. Just because I if, if someone doesn't want to do that in their own their own provocation, you know what I mean? If if I have to tell, put that in their head to sub or like then I then I don't want it you know like it, you gotta want to do it <laughs> so that's why I've never asked for that I'd rather I'd rather have 7,000 I know that not all those people watch the channel still but I'd rather have for instance 7,000 hardcore fans than 20,000 casuals so I want to be clear of the monetization stuff that I'm not throwing shade at anybody who monetizes I think it's great that people have made careers out of it for me and my philosophy is more I have a 40 hour a week job so I get my needs met through that you know for my family and myself and even a little extra for fun to go fishing and I don't view myself as an expert in the field either like a fishing expert like there's the people a lot of people who do that you know it's because they are paying you know you're paying them with you watching their ads for their expertise whereas more I'm, I'm a doof in a boat you know <laughs> so it's uh, I, I don't uh, think you need to sit through ads to watch me fish. Well, this flounder fishing seems non-existent here. This is kind of my first time trying this in South Marine Area 9. Let's go see how those crab pots are doing. Good cartoon. Oh, dang. That's a, look at these red rocks. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> these are Mondo red rocks. Yeah, I'll go over some big reds. Yeah, oh boy, that purple one's going to be delicious. So I am super glad though that I did end up going on to YouTube and you know I've been here for 10 years now instead of doing like a community television thing because speaking of community I can't imagine a better one. I appreciate you all so much who watch my videos so I think if there's anything in my retrospective that I'm retrospective about that's it. And I think any content creator worth their salt will tell you you know we get at least as much out of it making the content you know, from the comments and the support and the, frankly, the advice and the information sharing uh, as, you know, as perhaps you get out of it watching it. So I feel very lucky for the group of folks that have stuck with me and uh, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I want to be out of So we're down. Oh no! 
That was our keeper too. Oh no, we got keepers in here though. That was crazy. So we got ah! <laughs> That one swung over into my leg. <laughs> it was like I'll kill you. Yeah, at this point I just say it's safe to assume we got a limit of reds at the end. We indeed got our limit of 12 and many, many more that we had to release. Great way though to end the crab season. I'll see you in a few days when I talk about my plans for 2023. See you next time on Washington Fish Quest. Oh, that was cool. The folks in the in the orange car back there, I just stopped because they go, are you with Fish Quest? And I go, I am Fish Quest. <laughs> so we just said, hey, and happy holidays. That was really cool.